For the first time since the East African community was founded in 1967, the East African community will now have a female secretary general, Veronica Mweni Nduva from Kenya. She will serve a period of less than two years, succeeding Dr. Peter Matuki, who was recalled in March by Kenyan President William Ruto amid financial mismanagement allegations. Nduva said that her tenure will focus on promoting deeper integration of the community. In this regard, my priorities will be strengthen economic integration that encourages innovation, entrepreneurship, and job creation. In promoting peace and security, a secure East Africa is the foundation upon which we can build lasting prosperity. Peace and security is still one of the major challenges the East African community is facing. During the summit, Uganda's President Yuri Museveni hailed President Salva Kiir of South Sudan, who is the current chair of the Heads of State Summit. I want to thank His Excellency President Salva Kiir Mayadi for the trips he made to Rwanda, to Burundi, to Congo, DRC, to Angola on the issue of the peace in Eastern Congo. We need peace in Congo. DRC joined the East African Committee in 2022, but saw its relations with neighboring Rwanda deteriorate as the latter is accused of supporting the M23 rebels that have caused insecurity in the Eastern DRC. Despite joining the community two years ago, DRC is yet to meet its annual contributions, making it the biggest defaulter owing the community 14.7 million US dollars of the 39.8 million US dollars the member states of the community. Currently, activities of the East African Court of Justice and the Legislative Assembly have been suspended due to lack of funds. Fred Mukasambide is an East African Community Integration Expert and Vice President of the Democratic Party of Uganda. Finances of the East African Community are completely muddled. That definitely owes to the higgledy-piggledy nature within which, of course, partner states find themselves sending subventions to the East African Community coffers. The goodwill is what is lacking, and what is more material right now is an establishment of a process and a policy that requires GDP contributions per annum from all partner states. An alternative financing mechanism was drafted by the East African community more than a decade ago, which requires member states to contribute a percentage based on their GDP. The new Secretary General is taking the helm of the community that is under a financial and political crisis. Moses Saviarimana for Voice of America. Countries and organizations that were previously sending grants to Africa as official development assistance, ODA, have now resorted to lending instead, worsening the debt crisis that African countries face. A new report shows. The report titled A World of Debt, published by the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, UNCTAD, reveals that the share ODA has given in form of loans instead of grants has increased by over 6% since 2012. This has pushed countries that have traditionally relied on aid into a debt crisis, with many countries on the continent now spending more money on interest payment for their debts than vital sectors such as health or education. The decline in overall aid, the increasing use of loans, and the sharp reduction in debt relief resources add further pressure on developing countries burdened by debt, the UN agency said in the report published this week. Currently, it is estimated that about 34% or one-third of what comes to Africa as ODA are packaged as consensual loans and not grants as was norm previously. In 2012, this was 28%, an indication that donors are increasingly resorting to lending instead of donating. This added to the fact that the developing world are grappling with much higher interest payment on their sovereign loans has contributed to a spiraling debt crisis impacting most countries on the continent currently. 
according to the UNCTAD report. The world debt has exponentially grown over the last decade, rising from US dollar 50 trillion in 2010 to over US dollar 97 trillion as of 2023. Yet in developing countries, the rate of growth was twice as fast. Africa's debt, for instance, grew from an average of 30% as a ratio of gross domestic product GDP in 2010 to over 60% currently, while most developed countries have a debt to GDP ratio of less than 40%. At the same time, debt servicing costs have skyrocketed over the decade, disproportionately affecting developing countries, with Africa now paying 9.8 times more interest on their sovereign bonds than developed countries like German, for instance. High borrowing costs increase uh, the resources needed to pay creditors which makes it difficult for developing countries to finance investments, says the report. According to the report, the high cost of debt service for Africa is impacting citizens as countries divert resources from crucial sectors such as health and education to pay their debt. Last year, a record uh, for 54 countries cr across the globe allocated at least 10% of their government revenues to interest payment alone. Half of these countries were African.